Hey there, y'all. Happy Wellness Wednesday. So I'm coming to you from my office today because the weather is raining again here in Jasper, Alabama. So I wanted to come to you today and talk about self-harming behaviors that are easy to overlook and how to use a technique called the three circles to help. So I didn't know if you were aware, but Sunday, March 1st is actually Self-Injury Awareness Day in March. The whole month of March is Tell Someone Month. So as a therapist specializing in trauma, you know, self-harm is something that I have just kind of learned to expect in my patients. It's something that I've just kind of had to grow a lot more comfortable with. Um, so generally, people that self-harm do not wish to kill themselves. Self-harm is actually an example of a maladaptive coping skill, one that kind of works in the moment, but then later causes more trouble. So people who self-harm may progress to suicide later, but they're um, like people that are uh, suicidal, they're kind of more in a place of hopelessness, depression, and worthlessness, where people that self-harm, they kind of see themselves as coping with life. So I know that kind of sounds counterintuitive, but you know, after you've seen it for a long time, like, our, like I have, you know, you kind of get a sense of it more. So many people who self-harm view hurting themselves as a way of coping with life, actually reassuring themselves that they're still alive. Um, others self-harm to punish themselves, but everyone who self-harms is in a great deal of emotional pain, and self-harm is actually a way to escape. Self-harm can be addictive and habit-forming due to the release of endorphins into the bloodstream when we are hurt, resulting in a natural high or a feeling of euphoria. So any of you runners out there that have ever experienced a runner's high, it's kind of the same thing. So self-harm is officially defined as causing intentional damage to tissue on your body. So most people think of um, self-harming as like cutting, burning, scratching, hitting body parts, but there are other self-harming behaviors that do not manifest physically. So self-destructive behaviors that echo the same core beliefs as like traditional self-harming behaviors, like I'm unlovable, I deserve punishment, um, things like that are just as damaging to a person and everyone who dares to love them. So that's why I wanted to be sure and talk about self-harming behaviors that people typically overlook. So I made a diagram of the self of the three circles and I wanted to share it with you today. All right, so I hope that you can see that. So the three circles is traditionally from um, like an addictive therapy kind of standpoint, but it works great for self-harm because self-harm can also be addictive. So you notice there's an outer circle and that's uh, green. So you can think of it as like green light behaviors, things that are good. And then the inner circle is yellow. So you can think of them like a yellow light. And then the middle circle is red, just like a red light. All right, so I wanted to talk about some of the behaviors that are typically overlooked as self-harm. So these behaviors, if you kind of think of them as like kind of continually tugging at that thread that will cause you to unravel, then you kind of get the spirit of it. So the first thing I wanted to talk about, and I see this a lot, is watching things to make myself feel worse on purpose. Say if I'm feeling depressed and I go to Netflix and I choose something specifically to make me feel more depressed, that's actually self-harm. Allowing toxic and abusive people in my life. So lots of times, unfortunately, this is family. And so if you allow those people to kind of re-enter your life when you've gotten rid of them because they were toxic for you, that's self-harm. So pushing people away and sabotaging important relationships. This one can be so hidden. You know, you really, uh, lots of times as a therapist, I try to keep on the lookout for this one because it's just so damaging and people don't even realize that they're doing it. Overspending, living beyond my financial means, kind of forcing myself to be in a place where I'm anxious and I don't feel like I have enough because I just made poor decisions about money. That's self-harm. 
using outwardly appearing um, like exercise, outwardly healthy behaviors, but using them to an excess so that I hurt myself. So this is one that I see a lot, putting everyone else's needs above mine until I continually burn out. And burnout, you know, is something really interesting. As a therapist, I've burned out in the past, but I didn't know because I had never experienced it before. So lots of times people don't realize that they're um, in burnout. So sometimes um, a little bit of education about that goes a long way. Eating or drinking things that I'm allergic to or things that, um, like maybe if I'm diabetic and I choose to eat a lot of sugary foods, that's self-harm. All right, so now we are on to the middle, the inner circle um, behaviors, things that are kind of like warnings. So let's see when maybe I've lost a friend, a relationship, or a beloved pet, that can be um, a slippery slope, a warning sign that I could easily progress into those inner circle self-abuse behaviors. And the thing about something like that is maybe the um, self-abuse doesn't happen immediately, so I don't realize that those two things are connected. So when I'm working with somebody individually, that's something that I like to explore, is to see how those two things relate. Is there a connection? Because sometimes there is. Let's see, feeling lonely or alone, that can be you know, a big trigger to those middle circle behaviors. Feeling trapped in a bad situation at home or at work. The anniversary of something terrible. Um, I always like to tell people, you know, trauma doesn't just live in our mind. It lives in our body, too. So if you notice that you tend to have a, a hard time at certain times of the year, there may be something to it. And then this is something that I wanted to talk about as far as, like, kicking off a cycle of some... Um, some self-abuse behaviors. So the example that I wrote was, I ate three boxes of Girl Scout cookies and a gallon of ice cream and I hate myself. So this in and of itself is a self-harming behavior because that's not good for anybody. And then hating myself, that's an example of one of those core beliefs or the thoughts that can really get a whole cycle of making um, lots of self-harm decisions. Like instead of just stopping with the one, it can kick off like maybe a whole season of self-harming things. And that's just so devastating. All right, so lots of people are not even aware of this inner circle. So when I'm working with somebody, I try to spend lots of time there to um, kind of increase awareness because if I don't know I'm in danger, I don't know to do a lot of these um, outer circle green light behaviors I'm gonna talk about. So the first one is write about how I'm feeling. So that is a great one. Um, lots of times people feel like they're a burden or you know that others wouldn't understand and that's where journaling is perfect. You know, just write about your feelings. They lose some of their power from the head all the way down to the hand as I'm writing them. Do one yoga video at home off of YouTube. That's a great supportive outer circle behavior. Make a gratitude list. That's one of my favorites. You know, gratitude lists work so well because it's impossible for me to think positive and negative at the same time. So when I catch myself being caught in negative things, you know, I can also kind of, uh, I can learn to shift gears and do a gratitude list. And you can always ask for help. You can ask for somebody to help you. What, help me make a list of 10 things that are going well right now. And they will. Talk to a therapist. Yes. Catch myself doing things right. And this is a lot like the gratitude list. You know, for some people that are really having a hard time, Getting up out of bed, getting dressed, brushing their teeth, putting on the clothes that they need to put on and be where they're supposed to be on time. 
I call that suiting up and showing up. Some people, that's the best that they can do. That's really hard. So if you did that today, you did something right. Getting involved in online support groups. I was careful when I was doing these, um, these outer circle behaviors to do things that were free or low cost. And so if you have bipolar disorder, if self-harm is something that you struggle with a lot, if you're depressed, if you have post-traumatic stress disorder, there's all kinds of online support groups for you and they will understand. You know, social media is such an important part of all of our lives now. And then the last one, do one card out of the DBT deck. And so you may remember the DBT deck from a couple of weeks ago, but I am still loving it. It is just chock full of great outer circle behaviors to try. All right, so I hope this discussion about typical self-harm behaviors and then maybe those self-harm behaviors that you haven't recognized and then maybe some ways to help. I hope that this has helped you and I'm going to put um, some links in the comments to um, this community called The Mighty. They've got a great article. Uh, it's called 15 Self-Harm Behaviors That You Don't Realize Are Self-Harming self Behaviors, something like that. And then it talks about what to do with every one of them. And that was a great source of information for this video today. Happy Wellness Wednesday.